it's Rob. And Jason. And we're back. Live. No, it's not live. It's recorded. No, it's recorded. Yeah. yeah. Well, whatever. We're, we're live here. <laughs> that's it. We got up really early. We got something special for you guys today. Jason and me are going to be working together. We call it a training, but it's really nothing because there is a lot to learn from Jason. There is hopefully a little bit to learn from me. <laughs> the cool thing is we got the best model we got. Super modest. This point is going to be like, right? <laughs> I've known Theo for a long time. He is one of our very first patrons. He is on the poster that we made so, so many years ago with the quiff. Um, and I'm going to tell you, I'm a little bit jealous of Theo because, of course, of just absolutely amazing hair. But honestly, what I'm even more, well, jealous is, might not be the word, but be, because he's a little bit ahead of me in time. But what I really like is... I don't is, think the hair is going to come back. <laughs> no, my hair is not going to <laughs> Jason, that is really dickish. Comment, man. I'm pretty sure you're going to lose your hair. Oh, oh all right. my God. Oh, yeah. my God. You're going to get this back for me. The thing is, um, Theo uh, is your, your hardcore rockabilly. For so many years, he knows so much about music. And what I love the most is he still goes seeing all the bands. You travel to America a lot. Having rockabilly hair is not just a trendy thing you do for a couple of years. Love for music is in the heart, and I think you take it into the grave, yeah? Let me kill Mr. Bass player and singer of the legendary band Motorhead once said, if you think you're too old to rock and roll, you are. And I think Theo is the best example, man. Never stop fucking living. What we're gonna do, well, we're gonna all stop living one time but you know we're gonna enjoy the time till the grave as much as we can what we're gonna do today is we're gonna work with Theo's absolutely perfect hair what Jason wanted to know is I don't have to talk I don't have to tell Jason anything about fading and blah 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 I mean I actually watch Jason do his face and I'm just like you know which is great but he wanted to know more about the fundamentals of your rockabilly quiff Haircut, right? You yeah. want to keep it yeah. square, and you want to keep a lot of volume yeah. in the front. How to build that flat top crown into the pomp front and maintain that in the styling as opposed to getting that really kind of rigid look. Yeah. See, the thing is, rockabilly hair, I mean, you want to be all around in your shop. But, you know, you got to know your classics. And a good rockabilly pompadour is full on the sides square and you want to show you know the whole thing with barbering and especially with beautiful hair like this it's not always what you take off sometimes it is what you leave on we are going to start by wetting the hair thoroughly and then i'm going to show you how to dry and we're going to go straight in with the clippers cool i would use a little bit of grooming tonic cool Maybe even mix it with a, just like a half hazelnut. You know what? I'll put it in your hand. Yeah. I always do the grooming time with the fiber gel, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it that way. Have you blow dried with the, uh, the fiber cream yet? No, does that work? Really well. I got the trick from Paul. It looks awesome. It's like there's nothing in the hair. It's just really full, healthy hair. I have to try that. It's really cool. Okay, see, this is growing into the front, so yeah. just put a little extra and make sure it's super wet. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. See, even before you start drying, make sure that the water is like really So you kind of completely break down what the hair yeah. is naturally doing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because it's really important that, you know, I mean, we're going to dry it with a blow dryer. Yeah. yeah, but tomorrow I want it when it dries, it has to kind of dry into the shape of the pompadour. Yeah, yeah. because this is his hard side. Yeah. yeah? Cool. Okay, let's do it. Uh, 
Do I go in with the, the Denman brush or with the, the ah, brush? I would start with the um, with the um, vent brush, and then when it's all, when when the wetness is off and it starts being like damp, then I'm gonna then we're gonna switch to the Denman. Yeah. While you dry, especially the front, don't be afraid. Just use your fingers uh -huh. on the front. Because even with that scrunching motion, you're gonna divide the product, and you're really gonna, see? Blow up the hair. Yeah. So, this is actually invented, I know it's just a simple technique, by Trevor Sorby. Oh, he's when, awesome. When he had a client that was in a rush, it's a true story. Before that, it was only brushes, and he discovered that only with your fingers. Yeah. Yeah? The good thing about it is everything, when, once you start working with your fingers, your client will have the feeling, oh, I can do this. Because I can totally yeah. just, Because yeah. it's it feels so less comp, and you do a lot. Yeah? Yeah. And then when you're done using your fingers, that's... You can just straighten it out a little bit. Yeah, but not even... It is more about the roots. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah? Exactly. You will be surprised, especially with longer length, uh -huh. how much that's going to do, just yeah. with fingers. Yeah, but those are not the roots here. Yeah, so it's exactly. So this is where you switch. Yeah? Because this is your precision brush. Don't yeah. put it too hot. In. Yeah. Grab it. Is that medium heat, medium force? Yeah. 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 Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Now, we're gonna set in our first baseline. Again, rockabilly hair is white. That's why a lot of rockabillies keep their fenders. Oh. Because basically they wanna use grease, yeah? And grease works the best on length, yeah? yeah. Because they really, every rock. if there is one thing I love, it's the video where Johnny Cash does an Elvis Presley impression. You can find it on YouTube. Now, the Elvis impression, I don't know about that, but the cool <laughs> thing, he, when he's done, he takes his comb out of his back pocket, yeah, the hair is greasy, it's super long, and without a mirror, he combs it right in place. Now, that is rockabilly to me, yeah. that without a mirror, knowing what your hair is gonna do. So get to know your client, what does he do with his hair, what does he use, because that's how you want to cut the hair. Yeah? yeah? Okay, so we're gonna set in the baseline and then you're gonna do your whole fading magic. Yeah? yeah. But we wanna keep, we wanna keep this wide. So, okay. see, because this is pretty much where the fenders start. Yeah. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is wide. Okay. So Ooh. you're not trying to keep the comb square as you're no. tilting it out at an angle? No, I am. Keeping it white, so I got hair to play with later. Yeah? And what is very important, because, you know, I know that a lot, a lot of people focus on fades, and they gotta be perfect, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But people don't talk to you while looking at your fade. Yeah. They talk to you while looking at your hair. So this shape's gotta be perfect, yeah? So mm -hmm. everything that's going on behind the ear, it's okay, you can go short. But this, this has to be wide and square, yeah? Now, do your whole fading thing, because I know how good you're at it. I wanna see how you do it. 
but leave the sideburns, yeah? Because I like them to be a little bit fuller because sideburns tell a story. I mean, if you see a guy with sideburns, it screams rock and roll, man. It screams a love for music, yeah? It's a little wink to days gone by. So as natural as it would feel to go super short, yeah. I think because, you know, and his white hair really works with his skin tone because you actually see the white hair, it's gonna look fucking awesome, yeah? Perfect. Thank you. Does the baseline look right? Yes, don't be afraid to, well, we can do, we can do this later, but if you see a couple of hairs, yeah? Yeah. Just to cool. not, not like completely go in. Yeah, because yeah? you still want it to but go out. Just yeah. so you got a balance shape to work your fade into, cool. yeah? And then now, you can go, I actually, I usually like uh, hair to be slightly longer, but on this white hair, yeah, and it's there is only one little dark spot left here. Yeah, yeah. but the, the 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 like super short skin fade almost works absolutely okay. gorgeous in Theo's hair because the quiff is gonna look even wider and fuller. I mean, cool. if you got a head of hair like him, you got to show it off. But yeah. we're gonna show it off by accentuating the front by going shorter on the sides. And okay. So I can go to the skin on the sides? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, I was asking Theo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Theo, Theo, who? <laughs> <laughs> who is Theo? <laughs> Who's Theo? Oh, oh, sorry, man. <laughs> who the fuck yeah. is Theo? I'm not, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> So the quiff, is it more of like a, a neo-rockabilly or would you see that haircut in the 50s as well? No, hardly. Even the flat tops in the 50s used to be longer on the sides. Yeah. Skin fading was not really uh -huh. a thing of the 50s. That was more like 20s, 30s, 40s, yeah. but 50s the hair definitely got longer because rockabilly was considered to be rebellious. 
Uh -huh. And the really short haircuts, the crew cuts, were really like saying, um, I don't know, man, what is the word in, in, in English? They were conforming. They, absolutely. Yeah. So I, if you wanted to rebel, you would already grow your hair. Not as long as in the time of the Beatles, that was your second wave of re rebellious behavior, right? Because mm -hmm. the hair was actually growing over the collar. But mm -hmm. hair with length like Elvis Presley, for example, or Johnny, that was definitely a big uh, uh, middle finger to the masses. But the actual, uh, not even just in the length on the sides, but the actual like ratio of the flat top crown with the pompadour in the front, would that be something you'd find in the 50s? Or would this be they something that wouldn't? Have, they used to have all kinds of flat tops, flat tops with fenders, which oh. definitely a rockabilly haircut. Yeah, but mm. even then the sides were longer. But you gotta yeah. understand that cutting the hair flat top was a technique used by many barbers. And every barber knew how to do a flat top, sometimes more than how to handle longer length on top. So a lot yeah. of rockabilly haircuts were just like flat topped on the crown and clients that were into that kind of music said to the bar, please, please leave my length in the front. Please leave my length in the front. So that is pretty much where those kind of haircuts emerged from. Because okay. a lot of barbers just didn't know what to do with really long hair. So they tried to combine stuff, yeah? But then at a certain point, you had of course the first BA. Mm -hmm. um, and that was really an eye-opener to a lot of people because everybody loved those DAs. You know, they yeah. were worn by all kinds of layers, but it was also, you know, because the DA, the Ducks R's, yeah. that was just a way of, because before that, they didn't really know where to leave all the length. And that was the perfect mm -hmm. solution. And from those DAs actually grew the longer a Teddy Boy haircuts with the mullets, which was more of an English movement. So it was almost like in the 40s, you got your flat top and then it, flat, it grew in over the next couple of years and then you had the pompadour and you tried yeah. to keep the length. And then if you were really hardcore, you kept it going in, all the way into the 70s and you grew that's, super long. That's pretty much what happened. You can, again, you know, Elvis is the best example because he grew his hair longer and longer too. Yeah. Um, what's also interesting is that a lot of people think that Elvis pumped his hair up but he actually kind of slicked it down because he used mm. a lot of grease but because his hair was so thick and full and curly because there is the one photo where his hair is clean where he's wearing the green sweater very uh, iconic photo yeah he was and blonde they, in that one as well right he was he was blonde he used to dye his hair like every week because he didn't want to show anybody he was actually blonde but um the thing is you could tell that elvis presley's hair was super super thick because if you use a medium grease and fine hair it's just going to be greasy but his mm -hmm. hair could handle it because it was so much hair that's what i always like seeing like you said it's it's all about that shape is elvis was not about like you know 25 centimeters of hair off his head it was about that perfect comb that you get from the grease it's the way absolutely Okay, as you can tell, see, this is pretty much where the hair gets cool, right? Yeah. Okay, so everything behind the cool part, you're gonna take shorter. Yeah, that's, that's really how I look at it. So, okay. looking at the shape from the sides, right? This is you can cool. definitely yeah you can definitely tell. So we're gonna leave uh -huh. that front out. So that varies from like if yeah. someone's hair gets cool here, if they've Absolute, got like a huge quiz. Absolutely, yeah. nobody okay. has the same hair quality. Nobody uh -huh. has, right? So that's where I mean, you can learn a lot of techniques, but nobody can teach you taste, and you should uh -huh. never, ever. I I actually like it's. I don't even know it. It yeah, it's kind of a quote. Never be ashamed of your bad taste you know what kind of clothes i like to put on pink and nail polish and whatever you know it's bad taste yeah i like my leopard skin but this is the thing never be ashamed of it if you wanna if you like it it just doesn't matter man listen to your client but combine it with what you've learned and what you and what you like that's how you yeah. build your clientele and your clientele might not be somebody else's clientele 
But that's when it comes in. Never be a robot. Just be like, oh man. Yeah? So you will know. And actually, I think a lot of barbers out there and hairdressers, they know. They just know. They see a client yeah. walk in and they go like, oh my God. He's the one, yeah. That's what I want to do. And if you don't know it right away, man, then you're not there yet. It's just like, yeah. you know, and it'll grow on you. And your taste is going to change too. But right here, you can just tell. This hair is awesome, so we're going to accentuate the awesomeness yeah. by taking the rest shorter. Yeah? So we're going to leave. See? The awesomeness actually kind of wants to jump out. They, yeah. they literally tell you, I'm too awesome to cut. <laughs> yeah? So open up. Listen up, man. Yeah? And we're going to go shorter. See? That's falling right in place. So shorter. Yeah? Now because, and this is this is the perfect hair, right? It's growing slightly back. Yeah. Yeah, the hair kind of wants to jump out of your comb. Yeah, so don't be afraid to double check. Yeah, but as you can tell, I'm actually holding my comb a little up. Yeah, to keep it as full as possible. Rockabilly. It's a pompadour, it's a quip. We want to show off. So the haircut's almost a little concave. Yeah, well, you know, my whole way of working is based upon, I always want to have hair to play with later. So I'm over here. Exaggerating. Exact, blah, well, <laughs> what he's saying. The shape, so later on, I can really dive into it with clippers and perfect that shape, yeah? yeah? But I am not going to take away the essential parts of the shape of the haircut. Yeah, so short, short, short. And here, the shape of the skull is actually doing the work. Yeah, so we're taking all this off. Now, we got a, what is an eikpunt? Yeah. yeah. So you can take a guard, if you like guards. I know you use guards with your fading, so yeah. see, once I got a point that's about the length of my guard, yeah. yeah, you can just take your clippers. Yeah. Sorry, Yella was. Um, what were you? What were you? You were correcting the sound. You can take your clippers with your guards, yeah, and just take it over. See. Boom. Okay. Yeah. Because that hair, that's hair we're not, we're not going to need. Now, take this off, yeah? But there's a, there is a movement here. Can you, can you stand here, Jason? See, because you want this to be square. Yeah. So you go over, but look at this, what's happening here? Is it lifts off. Yeah? I'm taking it inside. Yeah? So I got hair left play with yeah so this is almost like a ramp you just kind of want to like if you could it's almost like you're throwing the dude off it's like exactly that. what i tell at the demos yeah it's a skateboard ramp the shape yeah. of that's why it's so important to loosen up yeah the moment you start fading like, yeah. yeah you're not following the shape well i don't have to tell you because the way you fade it's like uh. super loose yeah because you want to feel the hair coming up yeah it is exactly the same here you look and you use the shape of the head to catapult you out. Yeah. So the, it almost is like the more in control you are, the less in control you are. Pretty much. Okay. It's the body. It is loosening up. It's mm -hmm. knowing where you are in the haircut. And then pretty much let the best haircuts are the haircuts that are guided by the shape of the skull and the quality of the hair itself. Yeah. yeah? Easy as that. So you take. So I'm looking at it though, and what are you doing with these corners yeah, here? We're gonna leave those till okay. till we get a nice transition to the hair on top, because now all of a sudden, see, you can see the shape emerge. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I always say I want to leave hair to play with later, because uh -huh. now again, the hair plus the shape. Yeah. 
I think anybody watching the video right now can be like, oh, it's too long there, it's too long there. It's... Exactly, so all you gotta do, yeah, is listen again and follow the shape of the cut. But with every stroke of your clippers or scissors, because that really doesn't, doesn't, doesn't matter, yeah, it's knowing I wanna go from here to there. Oh. Yeah, so that is exactly the line I'm gonna follow. Yeah, the only thing you gotta be a little bit careful with, yeah, check the width here, because now the hair is uh, dry for a little longer. Yeah. So it kind of wants to go back to what it was doing. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I would suggest that once it's doing that, just keep going over it, but free him. Okay. Yeah. So you stand here, you really look for the shape, yeah? Now if there is little screw ups after the free hand, you can do that with your uh, yeah, clipper. Yeah, because there's a, a ledge here. Yeah, so you can do that clipper over uh -huh. home, but then you see the shape. Yeah? So like you said, it's not technically because of the way the sides grow, but having them the exact same length when you pull it out, but it's like when it's styled, it has yeah. to be. Yeah, okay. because when it dries, Mm -hmm. The natural cow legs or implant kind of want to go back, yeah. yeah, and that's what you follow because that's what the hair is going to do tomorrow when the client yeah. comes out of the shower oh. or whatever. And you want the hair to look good when he does it himself, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you don't have to show him that you can do it. He doesn't, do it. yeah. Yeah. You want him to be able to do it. Exactly. That is a client for life. Cool. Well, you got to make sure. The, the fade, the ratio for the fade stays even on the head, so you don't have like a distance of here for the fade and then a distance of here for the fade. And this, you cannot do the haircut without. Okay, so what we're gonna do is um, add a little bit of a dry product. You actually gave me a tip, so I yeah. wanna see how that works. Cool, we're gonna put a little bit of the fiber cream in the hair and dry it. This gives the hair, it almost feels like there's not much in it, but it gives the hair a lot of extra body. It gives the hair a lot of just full feeling. So it almost feels like the best clean hair can get. Sweet. Just a little bit. See, I'm learning about our own products yeah. every day. Because when, especially know? when you pull it apart, you can see that there, if you do it like this, you can see there are little fibers, and that gives the product, it just fills out the hair. Cool, I got this from Paul. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> I hope everything is doing great at the Black Sales Barbershop in Bath. Bath, the United Bath. Kingdom, Bath. <laughs> in the beautiful city of Bath. <laughs> We miss you, Paul. Cool. It's when he was just working here, I would oh, scare man. the shit out of him. You still oh, scare man. the shit out of me. Really? No. When I don't you do the, no. when you start staring at one of my haircuts in the shop, it's terrifying. When you do that thing where you like, and you just kind of walk away, oh, it's so scary. <laughs> I don't do that. You no. totally That's do. You, yeah, 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 he totally does do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's in your head, man. No, you stand there and you just kind of look at it and then you walk away from it. So? Well, and that would be nice if you said something. Like, oh my God, <laughs> really? <laughs> well, you say it looks good or it looks bad, but I just want to hear something other than just... <laughs> oh, wildly, wildly, Mikey. Yeah, so we got the shape. 
Yeah, this is this is pretty much the bulk removing part. That's what we've done now. So this is our sketch. Yeah, so that is a very strong shape, you see? Now, the thing is, you want to accentuate. So this is where your personal taste comes in. Plus, of course, always the wish of the client, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not going to force a haircut upon somebody ever, ever, but we will advise people about their hair. Same thing with products, yeah? You don't have to sell a product, but it's your duty to advise a product. Nothing is worse than a client leaving with a perfect haircut, but using the wrong product at home, screwing up your haircut. But it's your own fault, yeah? Because you gotta tell them how to fix it. Now, what I like to do is use the white teeth of my comb. I mean, I pretty much, when, when things get looser, because you might think it is a very tight cut, which it is, but sometimes a little bit of a more grof, uh, what's the word? Coarse? Yeah. Rugged. Rugged, yeah, maybe, well. Well, if you get, if the hair is a little give, you, then the way it flexes into yeah. the shape stays strong. Yeah, you want to have texture, yeah. but you also want the hair to be able to move, right? Yeah. So if there is wave, it has to be able to distract, oh. extract. In the, in the comb? Uh, contract. Contract. Contract in the comb, yeah? So we are gonna lock our beautiful bodies chiseled from marble into the shape. Well, I am, I don't know about you. You got a body chiseled from marble, Jason? You can't tell under the coat, but it's there. I think you do. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna lock our bodies into the shape of the haircut. And then with blending scissors, we're gonna go over it and we're really gonna blend in all those length. See, but this is the part that is locked. Yeah, so I wanna keep the weight and the shape, but sometimes you gotta look like where does the hair want to go? Yeah, especially with a little bit of wave, you gotta direct it into the right direction for you to blend it through. And then when you look, Come here, look. Now if you look how it all blends together, see? Mm -hmm. That is super nice. So when we got that one and it fits, you can double check by going over it the other way. <laughs> plum, plum, plum. Uh -oh. uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Yeah, but right now, you're gonna turn it into a Jason haircut, yeah? So we got a choice here between the traditional oil-based pink pomade 
But I had a, well, I wouldn't call it a discussion, but a, a conversation with Jason. And we think in this case, because we want to create some height, we're actually going to go for the, um, the gray one, which is, oh yeah, extreme hold mat pomade. That is a mouthful. I just, I, I, you know. You should I, see how disappointed Lawrence looked. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I remember the colors. The color system works best. Any client here goes for, I got the gray, I got the dark blue. Come on. Yeah, no, that's, the, true. That's, that's true. Yeah, and it's yeah, all good, out. man. When when I when you play <laughs> poker, you know the color of the chips and you know what they're worth. But the you clients know. here don't own Ruzel. Like, <laughs> I know, I know. So, let's go for it, right? We're gonna take a little bit and we are gonna kind of scrunch it in like we dried the hair. Yeah, now when you scrunch, you really want to scrunch the hair outwards. Yeah? So it's not getting, you're waxing out? Not waxing out. No, you want width. See? So you're... Yeah, outwards. Uh-huh. Volume. White. So you're really, when you scrunch, you're paying attention to the directions the roots grow and you're scrunching it the opposite yeah, way. Absolutely. So the same as creating volume with the brush, is you pull the hair so it stands straight out, you're doing it with scrunching. Look at that. Good yeah. job, Jason. Excellent. Thank you very much. Very Excellent very haircut, Rob. <laughs> a masterpiece. Great job, Jason. Yes. That is some really nice. Look at that rocking hand, man. It's <laughs> not <nice. laughs> 
64 years old. Jesus. I'm going out. <laughs> With the bang. <laughs> cool. Okay. So, Jason. Yes. Thank you so much. Oh, of course. I learned a lot. For today. That was really cool. Um, and now we're going to shave my head because I have a tattoo appointment.